you're watching The Ugly Inside, subscribe below. Welcome back to our end of season reviews and moving forward into our defenders now and we've got Van Dyke, Virgil Van Dyke, Chris from St. Mark's and Ewan, Clive and Tony from the original fanzine. Van Dyke, I'll start with Ewan. Uh, well, he's a pivotal part of the squad. Let's just start with that. Yeah, for me, best centre-back in the Premier League. His quality, you don't get that normally in a centre-back. His passing range, I mean, he'd be our best player in every position on the pitch. And the sort of money that, that is being offered to him and, and to the club as well may, may be hard to turn down for him personally, especially. We've heard, we've heard Ralph Kruger say that they're, they're in a position to say no to, to, to massive offers. It'll, be, it'll come down to Virgil, but he had a fantastic first half of the season. He would have been in Team of the Year mm. had he stayed fit, and he's been a massive loss, and I think we would have been challenging up near Everton for the seventh and sixth spot had he stayed fit. And I think Virgil basically won us about 15 to 20 points this season whilst he's been fit, and if he was still in the squad, then we could certainly push him for that seventh place. Oh, absolutely. I, I would have seen us comfortably into the top six, definitely. Had Virgil been died, that's that's my own personal okay. opinion. I think <laughs> with, with him and Charlie Austin, I it's think not a difference in points. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. But at the end of the day, I think Charlie Austin would have scored us fifteen goals this season, okay. and with Virgil at the helm as well, especially with somebody like Stevens, I just think that we would have been in the top six. Mm. Um, integral part of what we do in the close season, if he stays. Saints will already have a plan in place. They always have a contingency plan. They know that Virgil van Dijk goes, they've got targets. They do the inner review. They know the youngsters coming through, whether they'll be good enough or not, just like we've always done. And it seems like every single big club in the Premier League and every club across Europe are obsessed with van Dijk. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's probably not a club outside the top six in England that hasn't been credited with a serious interest in him. I think the money that's offered is difficult to turn down. I think even 50 million would make him the joint most expensive defender in the history of football, I think. But what you've got to look at, yes, 50 million is a lot of money, but we don't need the money as a club. And he, is he worth more than £60 million to Southampton? We look at how many more points we would have got this season. Yeah. Is he worth more? You know, you'd laugh at a £60 million price tag for a... We're a mid-table side just in the top half. You'd laugh at that much money for a player from us. But he's worth so much more. He's our captain, you know. He's tied down on a... Still under contract till 2022, I think. I think he's a wonderful player. But I think if we're in a place to turn that money down and he... Can, you know, he doesn't get attracted by a six-figure pay packet with Chelsea, then you know, I'd absolutely love to keep him on. Yeah, lots of things really to take from that. And Virgil would be a test of character in the summer if he were to, to leave us. And one I want to add as well, when Font left us, he was given the, the captaincy, which is a huge indication of his importance for us. Yeah, the yeah well, probably not since Letizia has there been one player that's been so much if you like, better than the rest of the players. Mm -hmm. in, 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 in the fact that Virgil, you could almost say was world class, not just premiership class. And um, such a shame, that injury. And, and such a shame, I'd, I'd love to have known if it was when he first did it, he, we, he played on for three minutes. You know, was it the second time? Because the ball kept going to him. You know, would he have been back a lot sooner? Anyway, we never to know. I hope we see him in a red and white shirt again, obviously like everybody else. Will we see it? Unlikely. In, in the reality of the Premier, horrible world that the Premier League is, I, I, I would absolutely love Saints to make a statement. It, it would be it would be one of the biggest statements inside of Kevin Keegan yeah. if, if we did that. And it would give everybody such a lift. But whether that happens or not, we'll just have to wait and see it. Okay, we're going to go to a comment sent over from Jake from St. Mary's Musings now, who's got something to say on Van Dyke. Van Dyke got injured in January, and up until then, Van Dyke was uh, great for us as he always is. I'm hoping he stays in uh, over the summer transfer window, and we'll get to see him in a Saint shirt again. I don't know how likely that is. Ralph Kruger seems to think, and Caldwell seem to think uh, Van Dyke will be staying at Southampton for the 2017-18 campaign. Um, I I can't see it happening, but you know what do I know. 
So Jake doesn't seem to think that uh, we're going to keep hold of Virgil in the summer. Oh, yeah, I'm inclined to agree with Jake. Um, Virgil van Dijk is only going to get better. Only going to get better. He's 25. He's 25 years old. For a centre-back, that, that, that's nothing, really. Um, he's on a five-year contract. That's up until the age of 30. I know he, he may want to go. I just... As, as Clive said earlier, just I'd like the club to put their foot down, a bit like Everton did with John Stones. They were given big offers, huge, 50, 60 million before he went for 50 the next season. And he stayed for a year more and improved. Improved, got, got better. And I just feel like um, if, if he does stay, there'll be offers of 70, 80 yeah. next season. Mm. It'll be a world record fee shortly. I don't think it's about the money with Virgil. If Real Madrid, Barcelona come in as a player, I don't care who you are, you're going to go. But why not Saints? Why not make a statement? Go out and try and buy a top quality player in whatever position. To give, at least give him food for thought. I think he'll go. I hope he'll stay. I wish him luck either way. To me, he is already a world class player. Stands out. Head and shoulders above everybody else. Let's go to a comment then sent from Nick Gregory from the Southampton away travel. Well, since he's been injured, we've just missed him so much. He's great in the air, he can run with the ball, he's brilliant at free kicks, he's just got everything. And we've really, really missed him. And that's why we're putting to an bit of 60 million, I think. Just the best player we've had in a very long time. We have to keep hold of him. Unless world record fee comes in like bail money, otherwise we've got to keep hold of him. So Nick reckons it's got to be at least bail money. Hundred million pounds, uh, but he's been excellent for us this season. As I said, great touches on the ball, pings the ball left, right, so controls the the football match. Yeah, I, I agree. I think something that obviously I touched upon earlier. It's not so much the exact figure; it's how much that means to the club. Mm. How like vital he is. You know, someone could argue Bale wasn't worth the money that they paid for Bale, uh, that Real Madrid paid for him, but. That's how valuable they were was to Tottenham that season. I think it's very similar. I know Van Dijk's a centre back, so maybe people will laugh off a fee of that much for him. But I, I do agree. I think we we'd be 10, 15 points better off if he didn't get that injury in January. I think we could have been challenging Everton, and realistically, therefore, we could have potentially been challenging for you know a Europa League spot as a result. I think you know I'd love to keep him, but I think the work, the best case scenario is what we maybe had with Wanyama and Mane, where we get one more season out of them, but then when you kind of get to the march of that season, it's clear they've kind of got their eyes on a bigger club, mm. but it's, it's difficult to see them staying beyond maybe another year. And do you think it was a case of Saints protecting their assets early on this season, signing a six-year extension, obviously oh, big, big plans for Virgil in the future of the, of the football club? Without a doubt. Without a doubt, protecting their assets. It's a wise move. They, they've said, they've come out and said publicly, haven't they? The board have said that they've got more players on longer contracts trying to dictate these transfer feelings. On the negative side, let's not forget that if we do sell him, Celtic get X percent of that money. So, you know, it's not it's, it's not as much as we think it's going to be. But, but I, I really hope they don't sell him. You know, fantastic, again, fantastic attitude. He's a leader without a doubt. And you can see he wears a shirt with pride. You know, and he's got a great rapport with the fans. Excellent. And let, let's wrap things up then with a rating out of 10. You and summarise this season. Tony hit the nail on the head. We've got to match his ambition. Like Ronald Koeman, he left because we potentially couldn't match his ambition in the transfer market like Everton have done with Schneidlin. Lassie spending big fees. If we match his ambition, there's a potential he might stay. But overall, <clears throat> he will end up leaving because he's that good a player. Um, up until the six months he had, 10 out of 10. Chris? Yeah, I think it's you'd be difficult not to give him a 10 out of 10. I think it's difficult to say there's been a real fault in his game this year. I mean, he's, he's made strides with his old game. He was brilliant at the start of next season, but you look at the start of last season, sorry, but if you look at June to December, you'd argue that he's improved as a player and he's still... For a centre back, he's young. He could have another ten years at the top of the game. I think. I think he's been fantastic this season. I think he's been our leader, and I think he's far and away our best player. So it's got to be a ten out of ten. Sorry, he is the only player in the Premier League that makes the game look easy. <laughs> Eleven out of ten. 
Ezt mondjuk szám. Ten out of ten, yeah, he is. He is. That's a very good comment. That he's got time on the ball. He always seems to be in control. Um, and Stepto, I bloody hate you, you dirty little <laughs> sh- Leicester shit. Come on, come on, seriously. But it's hard to disagree with that. Ten out of ten for me, yeah. then Virgil Van Dijk, especially if he played all of this season, would definitely give him Romeo. I run for his money in the, in the Player of the Season award, but Virgil Van Dijk immense as always. And uh, yeah, Van Dijk is important for us. Leave us your comments in below. Leave us your likes. Leave us your reviews, and subscribe for more. <laughs> <laughs>